We are taking your questions about COVID-19 to the experts. Tonight, I interviewed Dr. Robert Quickle with Alina Health. To begin, I asked him about the state's plan to reopen. As we look ahead to more of Minnesota reopening this week, what do you anticipate will happen as far as uh, our case numbers in the state? Well, I would, I'm anticipating that they could possibly go up. Minnesota has been really, really good at social distancing and staying at home. And now with some of that uh, loosening of those uh, restrictions, it's, it's possible that things could go up. And so, you know, I would encourage everyone to continue with all that good stuff like hand washing and staying six feet away from people and, and just trying not to go places that you don't really have to go. And do you believe that hospitals uh, at this point are ready for an uptick in cases? I think we are ready. Um, we have uh, used that time that, that we gained by with the social distancing, et cetera, to really prepare our intensive care units and make sure we had enough staff and equipment and ventilators and things like that. Um, and so we're as ready as we can be, um, but the hard part is with expanding surgery as we are, um, is doing that and not sort of uh, breaking that readiness. And we have seen uh, Wisconsin open up a, a bit earlier, and they've seen this jump in, in cases. And I think you touched on this, um, but what is your advice uh, to Minnesotans at this point as things uh, start to slowly get going again? I, I think the same advice uh, that we've had is uh, if you're going out, do it when you really have to and, and be careful. Uh, don't get yourself into a situation with, with a lot of people or a lot of people that you don't really know. Katie is wondering about um, flying. Do you feel like right now is a safe time to fly? I think um, for right now, I would personally hold off. Um, the, the safest thing is that lots of people are holding off, and so the airplanes still seem to be fairly deserted, which makes it a bit safer. But I think when we get back to crowded airplanes, and if we still have a high prevalence of the virus, then the danger level will go back up. And Lori wants to know if there's a standard for what kind of mask we should be wearing Simply, she's just wondering, what is the safest thing to wear over our faces? So the, there are really two reasons to wear a mask, and one is to protect everyone else around you from potentially getting the, the virus that you might have, the COVID-19 illness. And any kind of mask will really work for that because it'll just catch all the, you know, uh, the airborne particles that you might expel as you cough or sneeze or, or even talk. Um, if you're really trying to be safe and keep from getting the virus yourself, those masks are a little bit effective, but not as effective as some of the respirator type things like the N95s that you hear about. And the N95 though, at this point, they still want those to be reserved uh, for those frontline workers. So that's where those should go at this point? That's where those should go. And on, you know, on the topic of masks, I'm sure that's a, a question you, you hear a lot about, but Colleen is wondering about the overall effectiveness uh, of wearing masks. Now some articles and experts saying they aren't actually very good at preventing the spread of the virus. But in your opinion, it sounds like uh, they are. But where is the truth there? Well, the truth is that they're, they're better than nothing. And they're, they're, they do keep those around you safe if you're carrying the virus. They don't keep them completely safe. Obviously, it depends on the mask. And some have, you know, big gaps on the side. And so you might cough and particles could come out that way. And so there's... Um, there's there's no perfect mask for that. And Jerry is wondering about the numbers. Are other states not testing as many people as Minnesota is testing? Is that why our numbers seem to now uh, be trending higher? I think our numbers are, are trending higher because we tested relatively few people at the beginning and now we've really uh, ramped up our ability to test people. And so it seems like the numbers are rising fast. It's very difficult to know what the actual prevalence of the illness is out there. And you can send your COVID-19 questions to tips at WCCO.com.